Okay, hi, so I'm Jake Massimo. I'm going to be talking about some joint work with Martin Albrecht, Kenny Patterson, and Uri Soromovsky, which is prime and prejudice, primality testing under adversarial conditions. So I'm going to start with a couple of demos. Um, they're going to be quite quick because I don't have much time. Um, so first, we're going to look at GNU GMP, and we're going to look at the, prob the primality test in GNU GMP, um, which takes two arguments, the number that we want to test and reps, the rounds of testing that we are going to be performing. So we can kind of think about this reps value as essentially how many Miller-Rabin uh, iterations we're going to be performing. And uh, in documentation, we're told that reasonable values of reps are between 15 and 50. So here we have a little script um, just to do uh, a quick demo. Uh, I wanted to do this live, but I couldn't. Um, so we're going to have to use some screenshots and our imagination. Uh, so here is a 1024-bit number uh, that we give to GMP. We want to test the primality of uh, up to and including 15, the minimum rounds of uh, testing that is advised. So here we see um, that each time GMP uh, declares that this number is prime, even up to the 15th round of Miller-Rabin. That's great. So let's take a closer look at this number. Well, in fact, this number isn't actually a prime. It's a composite. Um, it's made of two larger primes, and more explicitly, uh, it's of the form n equals 2x plus 1, 4x plus 1, where x is um, some km plus 189, where m's are a product of small primes and k is some buffer to get it to the correct bit size. What's interesting about this number is that this result is actually deterministic within GMP, so this number will always be declared prime by GMP um, when using this amount of um, reps, so less than or equal to 15, the minimum recommended. Cool. Uh, so let's look at another example, uh, OpenSSL. Um, so here we're going to be looking at the equivalent sort of primality testing uh, function in OpenSSL, which again takes a number that we want to test the primality of and checks the amount of rounds of primality testing we want to do. Now, OpenSSL are nice in that they actually give us a function which takes the bit size of the number we want to test by default and uh, gives us the amount of rounds of testing we'll need to do uh, to achieve an error rate of less than 2 to the negative 80. So this is what happens by default. Of course, you can pick the amount of rounds of testing you want yourself if you want to. So another quick demo. Uh, this time, we have a 2048-bit number up here, this big one at the bottom. And we're going to run it a couple times uh, to see how it measures up. So firstly, uh, OpenSSL correctly declares it composite. Nice one. Going to put the same number in again and it's composite. So the error rate was 2 to the negative 80, right? So how long have I got? Um, let's try it one more time, see what happens. OK, nice. This time it actually declared it prime. Um, so this is pretty sweet. Uh, in fact, we got a little bit lucky here, but OpenSSL will incorrectly classify this composite number as a prime 1 in 16 times. So this work um, comes from uh, some wider work that we've been doing on the uh, implementation landscape of uh, primality testing in cryptographic software and some mathematical libraries as well. For each library, uh, we've been looking at what sort of primality tests are being offered, um, how they implement these tests, and how these tests handle adversarial input rather than the uh, random sort of input that they're set up to, to handle. So uh, a real quick overview of what we did. Uh, we basically documented the failure rate that these um, probabilistic tests say that they have. And um, we uh, compiled these into a table. And we also compiled the highest rate of failure that we could get ourselves. So we can see highlighted openness cell. We have 1 in 16 times. We also have some 100% failure rates for GMP and some other small libraries like JSBN, Cryptlib, Libtom, Lit, Crypt, Libtom Math, and Wolf SSL. Thank you for listening. Uh, if you want any more information, the paper's on ePrint, or just come and talk to me. Thank you.